505 in your hymns. 505 since Jesus came into my heart. So glad to see you all here today. All right. What a wonderful change in my life has been wrought since Jesus came into my heart. I have light in my soul for which long I had sought since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Floods of joy o'er my soul like when sea billows roll. Since Jesus came into my heart. Verse 4. I shall go there to dwell in that city I know since Jesus came into my heart. And I'm happy, so happy as onward I go since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Since Jesus came into my heart. Bless a joy of my soul like the sea billows roll. blessing it is when Jesus comes into your heart. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this day. Thank you so much for the, the truth of that song when Jesus comes into our lives and how it transforms us and saves us for eternity. I pray today that you'd encourage our hearts, help us to, to be mindful of hearing the voice of Jesus all over again. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. All right, turn to number 518. Oh, it is wonderful to be a Christian. We'll sing this in all three verses. Let's hear your lift, voices lifted up. 518. Life has purpose now it never had before. There is meaning to each day and even more. For a joy and peace I can't explain is mine. Since I found new life in Christ my Lord divine. Oh, it's wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it's wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it's wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it's wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. I can go directly to the Lord in prayer. He has told me I may boldly enter there. And he listens as his promises I plead. I find mercy there and grace for every need. Oh, it's wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it's wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it's wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it's wonderful to be justified. Verse 3, with a smile on your face. And the hope of heaven's glory fills me so. There is nothing forevermore I know. That is why the things of earth I lose eternal riches better far than gold. Oh, it's wonderful to be a Christian. Oh, it's wonderful to be God's child. Oh, it's wonderful to have your sins forgiven. Oh, it's wonderful to be redeemed, justified, forever reconciled. All right, great singing today. Good to see everybody here today. As always, I want to recognize first-time visitors that might be here this morning if you are visiting for the first time and have not received a visitor's card from our ushers yet we'd like you to raise your hand if you already received one it's not necessary unless you'd like us to see who you are uh, but we have visitors card we'd like to give to you if you are visiting for the first time just raise your hand this time and our ushers will bring you a visitor's card so that you can fill that out and at the end of church today on my right and your left right there in the foyer we'll give you a gift in exchange for that anybody i think we've already got them all great great to see everybody here this morning all right well, thank God the heat wave has passed. It still feels hot, but not as hot. That rain yesterday was pretty sweet. And uh, thank the Lord for rain, showers of blessings. All right, let's go ahead and do a, a scripture song today. Let's do Psalm 107. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. You know, the world says so about everything. College football started, high school football started. It's my favorite season of the year as far as sports goes. Not for the weather and stuff, but for the sports. And, uh, but boy, what we should be able to say so about what the Lord has done for us. Brag on the Lord. Let's go ahead and stand and sing a few uh, versions of this. Each time we're going to go a little bit higher and higher and higher. And let's sing this song. Here we go. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed Redeemed of the Lord, say so. But the 
helping out a lot. They make me sound good. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Who he hath redeemed from the hand of the enemy. One more time. Let me do something real quick. Here we go. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. to play. Look at your neighbor and tell them something the Lord did for you this week. What did the Lord do for you this week? Look at your neighbor and share something the choir there in your building. What has the Lord done for you this week? How has he blessed you? Share a little blessing. Maybe you got a you got a nice raise at work. Maybe your mother-in-law left and went back home. Maybe you got a card of encouragement. Maybe you won a ball game this week. I know the Jays won Friday night. That was awesome. And uh, to share a quick testimony. Listen, I, I'm a firm believer that if we don't do it in here, we're not going to do it out there. So we might as well start practicing here. Preston Davis has taught our team class. Did a phenomenal job teaching on John 3 and Nicodemus. That was my blessing for the day so far. I think my wife kissed me this morning. She usually does. I don't think she kissed me this morning, but she will eventually. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. I'll give you another 15 or 20 seconds, and then we'll get back and sing this a couple more times. The power of Scripture songs, amen. All right. Here we go. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. Let the Redeemer of the Lord say so. time the choir is going to sing one of our favorites. We love the song they're about to sing. Praise the Lord for his good.
right, stand with me, please. Number 587, Victory in Jesus. One more time, Jennifer. We need coffee. I heard an old, old story How a Savior came from glory How he gave his life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about his groaning Of his precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin Shake hands.
with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the Clint verse 2. I heard about his healing, of his cleansing power revealing, how he made the lame to walk again, and caused the blind to see. And then I cried, dear Jesus, come and heal my broken spirit. And somehow Jesus came and brought to me the victory. me with his redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing. Verse 3, I heard about a mansion he has built for me in glory, and I heard about the streets of gold beyond the crystal sea about the angel singing and the old redemption story and some sweet day i'll sing up there the song of victory in jesus my savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming blood, praise God. He loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is to him. He plunged me to victory beneath the cleansing blood. Let's take our Bible and turn to John chapter 11 this morning. Great singing, great spirit here today. It's so good to see all of you here. And I thank the Lord for a full house. We don't even have the deaf and the junior kids in here, so appreciate so much the, the church, the Lord blessing our church, and I'm honored and privileged to be here with you all today. May the Lord be glorified today. May we, may we bless the Lord and brag on Him. We're going to talk about Jesus a lot this morning, and I feel like we already have through song. And we're going to begin reading verse 38 through verse 44, John chapter 11. John chapter 11. I have not been able to get out of the book of John uh, lately. It's just a, it's one of my three favorite books of the Bible. But this today, I think, will be an encouragement to all of us as we live in these interesting days. I don't know if any of you have seen those videos that are circulating a lot where somebody asks either Alexa or Siri when the world is going to end or when the rapture is going to happen or when does World War III start. And, and I'm sure they're all, you know, crazy stuff, but they all keep saying it's going to be 2023 or 2024. And, you know, the, the thing that, and you say, preacher, are you saying you believe that? No, I'm not. But the thing that intrigues me is that the way the world looks now, the secular people, the lost people, the, the Alexas, the series, the people that run those are talking about it. That's when it should get your attention. People are engaged in that idea. There's people that are asking, when is the rapture going to happen? And of course, Siri and Alexa have an opinion on that. And uh, it's the fact that not, it's not being talked about. In fact, I feel like the world is talking about it more than the church is. And it shouldn't be that way. The world is looking around saying, hmm. And so in these last days, this message, I think, will be an encouragement and help to us. And uh, we're excited that Jesus might be coming. I asked him this morning if he would come today. He does what he wants. But if he doesn't come, I'll look forward to tomorrow. Amen. Look at verse 38. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, Take ye away the stone, Martha, the sister of him that was dead, saith unto him, Lord, by this time, let's read these next two words together just because it sounds so funny. Ready? He stinketh. That means he's going to stink and stink and stink and stink. For he hath been dead four days. And Jesus said unto her, I said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. And I knew that thou hearest me always. Because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he, had thus, when, he had thus spoke, when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead 
came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, Loose him and let him go. Thank you. you may be seated. At this time, Captain Von Trapp's going to sing a special for us. Oh, I really wasn't one for going to church, you see. But I went that night somehow in spite of that. They assured me in with a warm and friendly smile. And five rows back I sat. Five rows back I remember it well. The story of Jesus I heard them tell. They spoke about heaven and warned of hell. I listened from five rows back. Oh, the words of the preacher man were like arrows of burning truth. And they reached my heart as he spoke so earnestly. He told how Jesus suffered, how he bled and died. And he did it just for sinners like me. Soon the choir started singing, just as I am. Oh, I knew I was lost. My life was a sham. So I came and I was washed in the blood of the Lamb. From five rows back I came. What a change, things are different now. Peace and happiness fill my heart. Jesus walks and he talks with me each passing day. And I know that through the years of time and for all eternity, I won't forget the night my sins were washed away. When that choir was singing, just as I am, oh, I knew I was lost. My life was a sham. But I came and I was washed in the blood of the Lamb, from five rows back I came, from five rows back, praise God, I came. What a blessing it is to know there was a time you came, and I hope you did. I thank God I did one time, and the reason we could come to him is because he came to us first, and I bless the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. I want to speak to you and challenge you today I, on this thought of Lazarus and being in the tomb, and this is an amazing story. I don't have time to get into all the details. It'd be another good message about why the fourth day was significant compared to Jesus being resurrected on the third day. But there's a neat study in that. Just if you're interested in that kind of thing, go out and help yourself. Have at it. and It's fun. It's a good study there. Um, but here in John chapter 11, I want to see how I feel like the Bible is, the Bible is an amazing book. You can, you can read it and study it and benefit from it three different ways. There's three main ways that you can get from it. First of all, it is a history book. All right, let's go ahead and just get that down. It is a historical book. I absolutely believe God created the earth and heavens and the earth, right? We, I believe David killed Goliath. I believe Moses had those 10 miracles. Some call it the 10 plagues, the 10 miracles there in Egypt. I, I believe all those incredible stories. I believe Jesus walked on water. So there's a lot of historical benefit from the Bible. There's also doctrinal truth, and it's so important that as a Christian that we learn especially in these last days, when our group, our church, is the audience of the teaching, right? There's a time when they taught that you should not eat bacon, and I agree, many of you today would agree with this statement, thank God you can eat bacon, right? Would you, how many of you are excited about being able to eat bacon today? Would you, that's what I thought. I still think they should always ban coffee, that's just me, but that's not in the Bible yet. But uh, anyway, but 
There's doctrinal teaching, and most of our doctrine, our teaching, <coughs> many of it comes from the Gospels, but a lot of it uh, heavily weighs between Romans and Philemon, where you see epistles written to the church, and the understanding to rightly divide the, the word of truth is important. And then number three, and I love this one, the application part of the Bible. For example, there's 100,000 ways to write, preach the story of David killing Goliath, because there's applications you can make from a story. You can make applications from historical events. And here in the passage here you have... Amen. So let's back up just a little bit in the same context here. We're going to be in John 11, uh, but we will bounce around the Bible just a little bit. Let's back up to verse number 22 real quickly. And of course, when Jesus had heard that Lazarus was sick, first he heard he was sick, and then Jesus uh, delayed himself. Now, some would have called him late, but I want you to understand, we all need to understand that according to God's time, he's never late, he's always right on time. And God is not controlled or dictated by man's time. He is the great I am. And so while people were looking for a miracle of healing, a greater miracle of resurrection took place. So sometimes right now while you are searching out for healing, do not get frustrated because the resurrection might be around the corner too. Sometimes we quit before that four days comes about. And so hang in there, Christian friend. He knows what you're going through and that resurrection or miracle may come eventually. As you see here in the Bible, the Bible says here in verse 22, Actually, it's verse 21. Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. I appreciate that faith there. Uh, Jesus, I'm sure, appreciate it. Look at, but I know that even now, <coughs> whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus saith unto her, thy brother shall rise again. Notice that word again. He shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. Jesus said unto her, boy, there's that, those two words again, those beautiful words, those introductory words, I am. Thank God for that. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were yet dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? She said unto him, Yea, Lord, I believe that thou art the Christ, the Son of God, which should come into the world. And then, of course, you see a very famous verse a few verses down later. As Jesus is observing the crowd, people are weeping and they're grieving because Lazarus was somebody important. He was a, a man of good repute. Uh, Jesus had a relationship with his family prior to his death. Uh, they were on a first name basis with Jesus. Mary and Martha and Lazarus knew Jesus well. And then you see that very famous verse, the shortest verse in the Bible, John eleven thirty five. 35. Jesus wept. Today I'd like to give you the idea of where many Christians fall. They fall into one of three categories today. Number one, they are in a tomb. They are spiritually dead or dying. Now, some preachers would preach that this is a type of a lost person, but the fact that Jesus uses the word again and that he comes resurrected is, I fear that many Christians today have lost that original joy they had, that, that first love, and they're almost sleeping their way through these last days. Paul said in 1 Thessalonians 5, Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. Why would Paul say that? Well, if he tells us not to sleep, that means we have the potential to sleep. He's not talking about physical sleep. He's talking about spiritual sleep. Sometimes the word sleep in the Bible relates to death, and sometimes it does not. It means physical sleep. But let's make the application today that many Christians, many of my, many Christians that I know personally, they are literally dead spiritually. It's been a long time since they feel like they've gotten a word from the Lord. They've, they're struggling spiritually speaking. Number two, the second group would be those that are still, they're awake and they're out of the tomb, but they're still bound by grave clothes. That's what the Bible tells us in our original text, that when Jesus says, Lazarus, come forth, and interestingly enough, when Jesus tells Lazarus to come forth, he comes out of the tomb. But when he came out of the tomb, he still came out with his grave clothes. By the way, here's a neat thing. When they came and found Jesus' empty tomb, the Bible says he had folded his napkin in the tomb. Jesus didn't need anybody's help to undress him from the grave clothes, so to speak. He did it himself. But human beings do need help. Sometimes as a Christian, you may be alive and you're excited, uh, and you're, come, you're excited to be out of that dead state, uh, and, and you're struggling struggling though because you still feel like you're bound and that's when brothers and sisters in Christ need to rally to this person and help them and lift them and, and help them with that and Jesus doesn't unwrap him himself he says hey you go if I, by the way he said you move the tombstone out of the way you go take those grave clothes off and then he makes this beautiful statement and this is the third category of Christians loose him and let him go when I hear that phrase loose him and let him go unbound him meaning now hey you now then watch this now can reach the potential that I have for your life. 
I was being asked, I was talking to one of our younger preacher boys. He was talking to me the other day and he asked me, what's, a, what's one of the most frustrating things about being a pastor? What's one of the, some of the best things about being a pastor? And I said, they're really the same thing. One of the most frustrating things is seeing people quit on God and missing out on the potential and plans God had for their life. And in the same breath, I said, one of the great things is when people do get to see the potential and plans that God has for their life. What a blessing that is. And I long for that myself. I don't want to ever find myself wrapped in grave clothes. I don't want to find myself laying in a tomb. Hey, you remember, you remember my Christian friend. You remember the days how excited you were to, to read your Bible. Remember how excited you were uh, to kiss your wife. Excited you were about that child being born. Remember the joy we used to have. It's amazing how newness is something that continues to wear off. And secularly speaking, and worldly speaking, I can understand that. We were so excited about that new car we got. But four or five years later, it broke down. We were so excited about that new tie or that, no, nah, I don't know anybody be excited about getting a tie, but anyway, I'm not going to talk about that. We were so excited about a ball team. Boy, a few years ago, my Florida Gators were awesome. This year, they're trash. It's going to be another rough year for Gators fans. But Seminoles fans, we will be back. We will be back. You know we will. The cycle will reverse once again. we got some Seminoles fans in here. And new things come and new things go, but spiritually speaking, watch this now. The Bible says His mercies are new every day. We are renewed in Christ, which means you should not be ever getting over your salvation. You are actually one more day saved today than you were yesterday, which means, wow, the power of the blood, the power of the cross, the power of his salvation still was able to keep me in spite of me qualifying as a sinner one more day. Yet we do lose that. How do we get back? How do we get to the place where we are loosed and let go? Number one, you've got to hear the voice of Jesus again. You must hear the voice of Jesus. Look with me there in Revelation, or I'm sorry, John chapter 11, verse 43. And then we're going to go to Revelation 3 in the 1 Kings 19. If you've got quick fingers, uh, bounce around with me. If not, just sit there and listen. I'll read these verses to you. But in John 11, verse 43, the Bible says, And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud, next word, Voice, right? Voice, Lazarus, come forth. The voice of Jesus was heard that day. If anybody else standing that day would have said, Lazarus, come forth, there would have been no movement. If anybody else said, Lazarus, come forth, there would have been no revival, revival of Lazarus' life. If anybody else would have said, Lazarus, come forth, there would have been no reason to get excited and then give the next command, which is loose him and let him go. This is a significant truth here today because I'm telling you right now that we are living in a generation now where people do not recognize the voice of Jesus anymore. Now go to Revelation 3 and I'll prove it to you. Revelation chapter 3 is talking about the church of Laodicea. And I'm a firm believer that, that the Laodicean church can definitely apply to the church in which we see today in America. They think they're rich and increased with goods. They think they've got it all together. They think that everything's going great. It's hunky-dory. Life's easy. I'm blessed. Boy, everything's going just great for me. And God says, no, it's not that thou art miserable, poor, blind, and naked. Now, let me tell you why sometimes we think we're all good when we're not. Because in Revelation 3, you'll see only, only of the seven churches, only one church, the Bible says Jesus was not even in the church. He was standing on the porch knocking on the door. So look at me in Revelation 3, verse 20 real quickly. Stay with me now. The Bible says, behold, Jesus says, I stand at the door. He's talking about the church. Watch this now. And knock. That's what he says. Is that what your Bible says? Help me now. He stands at the door. And what are the next two words? Help me. And knock. If any man hear my knock. Is that what the Bible says? No. If any man hear my voice. Why is that significant? Because listen to me. A lot of things are going to knock on a church's door. A lot of things are going to knock on a church's door. There's only one voice we should recognize today. And by the way, it's not the voice of a pastor. It's not the voice of a, of, of, a, of a church leader. And I thank God for leaders of the church. I thank God for all those things. But the leaders of the church should be listening to the voice of Jesus. The teachers of the church should be listening to the voice of Jesus. Husbands, we should be listening to the voice of Jesus. Fathers, we definitely should be listening to the voice of Jesus. And we should be teaching our children, three of my beautiful daughters right here in the front row. And I've strived to teach them. I failed miserably, but I teach them to listen to the voice of Jesus. Why? Daddy's voice has failed him too many times to admit, thank God today, the voice of Jesus has never failed him. The Bible says here, behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice 
and open the door. I will come in him, will sup with him, and he with me. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jesus has to have somebody open the door for him. It's his church. He bought it with his own blood. He's a gentleman. He does not force himself upon anybody. But if we hear his voice and welcome him back into what we believe, welcome him back into our lives, it's amazing how transformative it is in our lives. Go to 1 Kings 19 with me real quickly. 1 Kings chapter 19. Take your Bibles and turn to me there in 1 Kings chapter 19. This is an amazing chapter about an Old Testament prophet. The principle of hearing God's voice has been in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. I'll prove it to you. The Bible says as soon as Adam and Eve sinned, what does Adam say? I heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden. He heard the voice of God. And God came to him and immediately wanted to restore the relationship. There's significance to the voice. Can I say to you today, in these last days, the Bible warns us about false Christ, false prophets, false teachers, false everything. I mean, a lot of people are trying to hijack and imitate the voice of Christ. But can I illustrate it like this? If today, this afternoon, if every one of you ladies was walking out the back door and somebody handed you my cell phone number and said, sometime between today and 430, I want you to call pastor's cell phone and just say something to him. If all of you ladies did that this afternoon... Somewhere, and one of them was my wife, somewhere in those phone calls, I would recognize my wife's voice above everybody else's voice. Now, what would help is that she would say, man, baby, that was a rough message. Did you not sleep good last night? That would really be a big help. That's one reason I would recognize her voice. Uh, but anyway, I, I, uh, I asked her to be my heaviest critic, but she's not. She's always so good to me. But you know what? I've heard my wife's voice for 26 years now, and nobody can fool me. Every once in a while, Brielle and Rana, Claire's still got that younger voice so she doesn't deceive me but my two older girls can deceive me every once in a while a little tricky but in, in about within five seconds i know my baby's voice is on the phone why because i've heard it for 26 years i i mean when we first got married we still we didn't have cell phones we still had landlines miss dicky i know you're old enough to remember this remember the rotary phones remember the long wires remember when you got all the way to that last digit and you actually hit the wrong number and you had to start all over again man that was something else I mean, those old school phones, man. But they were good weapons, too, man. I remember hitting my brother upside the head with them sometimes. You could strangle some of that cord, man. Some of you get that extension long cord, you could walk all through the house. I remember tripping over that phone sometimes when my brother would be on the phone. The nice thing about having deaf parents is you'd have to worry about your mom and dad using it, that's for sure. I think the only time my dad used that phone was as a weapon to, do, to discipline his sons. But look at me now, 1 Kings chapter 19. Watch this now. Look at 1 Kings chapter 19. The Bible says this. After Elijah saw this incredible miracle where fire falls down from heaven. Don't miss this now. 1 Kings chapter 18. Wow, it's powerful. What a story. What a testimony. Elijah finds himself discouraged, defeated, and ready to quit. And watch what God does for him in verse 11. And he said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. 1 Kings 19 verse 11. Here we are. And behold, the Lord passed by and a great and strong wind rent the mountains and break in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. You see, too many Christians today, while we're laying in that tomb still, are wanting something of a fire, something of an earthquake, something of a wind that will stir us up again, that'll get us back. And that's why emotional conferences and emotional meetings do stir us up for a while. But let me tell you, here's how you will stay consistently, faithfully serving the Lord by hearing his voice. Just as I have heard the voice of Jesus, my wife for 26 years, I've tried my best to hear the voice of Jesus for all these years. Which is why you see a pastor that has not changed much in all these years of preaching the word of God. Let me give you an example of this. I was standing at the back door one day many years ago. Don't try to figure out who it was. I made the statement in my message that anybody can get saved. Jesus came to save the whole world. He stopped me at the back door and said, that's false teaching. I have to leave the church. You can't teach that. He only came to save a certain group of people. He said, I read such and such, but he, named, he, read, he read the, he, he, no, I'm sorry, he said, I read a book that told me that. And I immediately said, was the author's name, and I gave the author's name, he goes, how'd you know that? I said, I know about those voices. And I don't read those voices. Let me tell you what's obsessing Christians today. I just want to help you today. Be careful with the podcasts that are out there. I don't get my doctrine from TikTok. I don't get my doctrine from a reel on Instagram. Are all those things bad? No, I make stuff sometimes. I'm not, I'm not against all this stuff. Be careful with books today. Are you against books? No, I've written books. I've wrote a book. You should read it. <laughs> it's a good book. It's about my mom, daddy, and my savior, all right? If you haven't read it yet and it's been out that long, shame on you, church. No, I'm just kidding, all right? I'm not against podcasts, but I don't listen to Christian podcasts. I don't. I decided about eight, nine years ago when they started getting popular, 
I, I do listen to podcasts, but I listen to, I, here's a podcast, Building Wealth, it hasn't worked yet, but I'm still working on that, History, Secular Business Podcast, and Conspiracy Theory Podcast, yeah, and me and my one daughter like that kind of stuff, but I don't listen to them, you know why, because sometimes people are so good at masking the voice of Jesus. And all of a sudden, we begin to get familiar with the voice of some person who's only going to be around for his, his or her 15 minutes of fame, and it changes everything Jesus has taught us for the last 10, 15, 20 years. I just want to hear the voice of Jesus. It was the voice of Jesus that said, Lazarus, come forth. It was the voice of Jesus that said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that who should believe in him should not perish, but have an everlasting life. It was the voice of Jesus that said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come to the Father but by me. It was the voice of Jesus that said, I am the resurrection and life. It was the voice of Jesus that said, I am the living water. It was the voice of Jesus that said, I am the beginning and the ending. It was the voice of Jesus that said, Before Abraham was, I am. Hey, listen, be familiar. Get so intimate with that voice of Jesus today so that when he speaks, the podcasts that knock at your door, the dangerous authors that knock on your door, they come knocking and they come knocking and they come knocking and they come knocking. I'm not interested in hearing the knocks at the doors. I'm listening for a voice. And I want to be able to recognize the voice of Jesus. I was thinking about this message about three weeks ago and praying about when to preach this and it happens to be on my birthday tomorrow. Tomorrow's my birthday. And uh, I just thought to myself, man, I'm, that's right, Brother Bruce, happy birthday, August 28th. Michael Jackson's birthday was August 29th, one day apart. But anyway, so free trivia there for you. Ben Carlisle's was Friday, right? Yeah, Chris George's was nine days ago, I think, right? I can keep going, but we won't do that today. Stay with me now. Don't miss this now. And I said to the Lord just the other day when me and him were talking alone, I said, Lord, I'm coming up on another birthday it's been a long time now that I've been preaching your word. Please, Lord, help me to always hear your voice. There's a lot of noise out there. There's a lot of noise out there. That's why I love the Seed Project so much. People are so obsessed with English versions of the Bible today when much of this world has never seen one copy of one verse. You know what all those versions are? A lot of noise, a lot of voices, a lot of knocking. I want to be familiar with one voice. I want to know that one voice. I want to know, just like when someone calls, a lady calls, I know that's my wife on the other line. I know that voice. Why are we getting quiet today? Don't get nervous now. I'm only encouraging us to listen to the voice of Jesus. Is that a bad thing? Is it, help me, is that a bad thing? See, we live in a day and age now where we are looking for something spectacular. We're looking for something that's, that's just going to make our, our goosebumps come alive and make our hair stand on end. But it's not that church. It's that consistent, still, small voice. Yeah, I like the wind. I like the fire. I like the earthquake. But when it's all said and done, when I jump, I want to know where I'm landing. When I land, I want to still hear the voice of Jesus. Make sure you hear the voice of Jesus. Only his voice performs the miracles. Only his voice gives us longevity. Only his voice gives us consistency. Only his voice saves. Only his voice helps and forgives. Only his voice has the power to transform lives, marriages, and churches. His voice. My voice is irrelevant. I've been invited to be guests on these podcasts. I've been, I've been asked to be partnership with different podcasts. And I finally decided I'm not going to do that. Why? Because I just want to hear his voice. I want to hear his voice. Number two, real quickly. Number one, hear his voice again. Please hear his voice again. Hear the voice of Jesus. May Jesus speak to your heart. May Jesus speak to you as a husband and a father. May Jesus lead you. Number two, notice this. I love this one. The grave clothes. The grave clothes. Notice what the Bible says about the grave clothes. Look at verse 38 real quickly with me. Look at verse 38. The Bible says this. Jesus, therefore, again, groaning in himself, coming to the grave. And it was a cave and a stone lay upon it. Jesus said, take ye away the stone. So Jesus gives the commandment, hey, take the stone away. And Martha interrupts and says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. He stinketh. Jesus saith unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou shouldest see the glory of God. Trust my voice. Listen to my voice. Don't question my voice. I do that a lot. Forgive me, Lord. I question and doubt his voice a lot. Stay with me. It's going to get good in a second. Watch what the Bible says. Notice this. Notice the significance of this. The Bible says, And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me, and I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. And when he had thus spoken, he cried in a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth. Watch this now. Bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound with a napkin. Which means his hands and his feet and his eyes were not giving the proper testimony of the voice that was calling him and setting him free. You know what I've learned about people that have body odor? Everybody around them smells it except the person that has B.O. 
How about when someone's got bad breath? We've all been there, man. Don't act like you never had bad breath. It's amazing how everybody around you knows you got bad breath, but the person with bad breath don't know they got bad breath. And they usually want to get up all up in your grill, too, and talk to you, right? Thank God for pews. You sneak in the pew and lean back a little bit, man, because, you know, I back up sometimes. They keep getting closer and closer. And listen, I've had bad breath some days. My dad taught me to love raw onions. Raw onions don't always make your breath smell good. Somebody help me right there, right? Sometimes Christians do come out of the tomb, and I'm thankful for that. But they stink. They're not a good representation of the voice of Jesus Christ. That's why Jesus is not done yet. And that's why we as a church should not be done yet. That's why we're launching this, this huge, huge discipleship program we're starting on October. And that's why we had a study on it last Wednesday night. We've already had some people sign up for it, and I'll say more about it at the end of service today. And this Wednesday night, we're going to do it again. And the following Wednesday night, we're going to emphasize discipleship so that we can get to the point. Listen, there was a time in my life, and there's been times in my life when I stank. There was times in my life when I, I didn't see clearly because a napkin was covering my face. There was times my hands were bound and my feet were bound and I wasn't walking where I should go or touching what I should touch. I wasn't saying what I should say. I wasn't singing what I should sing. I wasn't hearing what I should hear. And I stinketh. My testimony stank. And listen, can I tell you something today? So many Christians in the world today, we are not giving off the proper testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ. My brother preached a powerful message many years ago on, on taking the Lord's name in vain. And he said we got it all wrong. We always think it's when we cuss and say GD or Jesus Christ or, or in, in vain and all that. He says that's not what God's talking about. He says when we live in such a way that we bring shame to his name, that's taking his name in vain. Have you been saved today? Are you a child of God? Are we forgiven? Are we going to heaven someday? Do we have the joy of the Lord in our hearts? Then listen, we should live in such a way that the world sees, here it is, I know we get scared of this word, a difference. There should be a difference. Our families should be different. Our marriages should be different. Our lives should be different. Why? Because Jesus is different. Study the Gospels, you'll see a consistent principle of different. In the life of Jesus. He was different than the Pharisees. He was different than the scribes. He was different than even the disciples. And the disciples had a hard time getting a hold of the different Jesus that he was. But thank God, he has helped me to be different. I see things differently. I hear things differently. I live differently. Why? Because of what Jesus has done in my life. What category are we in today? I had to ask myself this. I preach this to myself. Number three and I'm done. Jesus finally says, loose him and let him go. Loose him and let him go. Look there in John 11, verse 44. I love this. The Bible says in verse 44, And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes. And his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto them, loose him and let him go. Hold on a second. This is where it gets really important. I have a question for you. This is a little bit of an assumption question. Jesus gives a command to some people that are standing by to loose him. I have a question. The people that he commanded to loose him, were they still bound by grave clothes? Not a trick question. I don't like trick questions. Were they bound by grave clothes? Help me, church. Were they bound by grave clothes? No. So they weren't sitting in a court or criticizing somebody because he stinketh and they forgot that they used to stink. They weren't sitting around and saying, oh my goodness, man, I'm not getting anywhere close to that person. I mean, they're not as polished as I am. They're not as special as I am. They don't know the Bible like I do. Listen to me, one of the great joys of a Christian life is to get around the stinky crowd and remember that you used to stink and I used to stink and help the stinky become less stinky. I'm going to start calling it the stink ministry. Forget discipleship. I'm going to call it, hey, remove your stank ministry. That's what we'll call it. Remove your stank what are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, listen to me. Let's never forget that there was a time when that kid that's misbehaves in church and drives you crazy, that was you. When that teenager didn't quite get the services, that was you. I get sick and tired of teenagers that have cell phones in church. Well, the only reason you didn't have a cell phone in church when you were a teenager is because that's how old you are. Sometimes we remove ourselves so far we forgot the stank. And you know what's good about being around the stink crowd? It reminds you of your old stank. It reminds me of my old stank. It makes me thankful that I don't stank like that anymore. And even on bad days, I still stank sometimes. But boy, thank God I can go help somebody get their grave clothes off. You know why? Because I had grave clothes. You know why every once in a while I still go back and put them on? I realize, oh my goodness, what am I doing? We need each other, church. Step up to the plate. Lift each other. Encourage each other. If somebody comes in the church stanking it up, help them out and love them. Why? Because you used to stank. But, but, but Lord, he stinketh. Yeah. And you used to stink too. I know. So today, church, 
Bless you. That was a good strong sneeze right there. Somebody stank God him right there, amen. Listen to me. We live in interesting days. Many of my friends, many of my Christian brothers, many of my preachers now, they're not, they're not even wearing grave clothes. They're laying in tombs now. They're just giving up. They're defeated. They're discouraged, and it grieves my heart. But for the grace of God, it could be to me tomorrow. People that used to come to this church, I don't, I, I, I'm, I'm for it. It's great if they're still going to church, but a lot of them aren't even going to church anymore. There's a deaf man I used to preach with all the time who now comes out, and he makes regular videos saying he's an atheist. And I watched him preach before, and he preached good. What happens? How does that happen? It's not that difficult, church. We stop listening to the voice of Jesus. Stay close to that voice. Stay close to that voice. Voice means something to me, and I'll close with this. When you grow up in a home with deaf parents, deaf people have significant voices. The other day I was driving down the road. And my, my, my daughter texted the family the other day and said she had a dream about my dad. And she gave us a beautiful story about the dream she had of my dad. And she even knew the sweater he was wearing. It was a sweater I didn't really care for, but I'm not gonna, I never told him that. But she was talking about my dad, and my brothers had a dream about my dad. I hadn't had a dream about my dad since he passed. They say a lot of people do, but I haven't. I don't know what it was, Brother Street. I was just driving down the road the other night. I rolled down my window for a second. I don't know why I rolled down the window. I just wanted some fresh air in the car. Oh, I know why, because the rental, someone was smoking in it before. Someone was on fire for God before I got this rental. And I swore, Brother Street, I heard my dad call my name. I just heard his voice. I, I, don't, I don't know how to explain it. I mean, I literally, it was so, so real that I turned around and looked behind me in the car. And I, I mean, I almost swerved off and ended up in a ditch. And that would have been bad. But I mean, I was that real, and I began to cry while I was driving. And I said, oh, just to hear his voice again. And as soon as I was thinking that, I heard the voice of Jesus. He spoke to my heart and he said, Randy, Dad's just fine. He doesn't have a walker anymore. He's as healthy as he's ever been. And he's waiting for you to come see him. The voice of Jesus, just when you need it, it's there. Well, I haven't heard it lately. Maybe it's because you've got too much noise going on in your life. Maybe you're too impressed by the fire and the wind and the earthquake. Be still and know that I am God. Be still and hear my voice. Heads your bad eyes are closed. Thank you for listening so well today. Hello, Pastor Randy Dingman here of Bible Baptist Church in Jefferson City, Missouri. Let me take a moment and express to you what our main vision and purpose is of this ministry. You see, much of this world today has a question. It's a question that was asked in John chapter 3 by one person. It's a question that is asked by the masses, but when you really think about it, it's really a question we all have to come to grips with, face to face with, one on one in our lives, sometime in our life. The question is this, where will I spend eternity? And that question was asked by a religious leader by the name of Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He approached Jesus Christ in the middle of the night and had a question about spiritual matters. Well, good thing for Nicodemus, he came to the right person at the right time because Jesus Christ is the answer in spiritual matters. You see, many of us have questions about that, and man has tried in many of its efforts to answer that question with their own ideas and philosophies. We've tried to come up with ideas on how to get us to heaven, how to confirm our way to heaven. But the fact is, we got to find out what God says about eternal things. And that's why asking Jesus Christ that question is so vital, because when you ask Jesus a question, you get the answer. And as the question was asked, Jesus answered simply this, you must be born again. In John chapter 3, that's what he said to Nicodemus, and that's the same thing he says to you and to me, even today. You see, God is God of this universe, but he's not everybody's father. What does that have to do with John chapter 3? Well, think about this. We all have birthdays. We all are physically born under this physical planet. Or else you wouldn't be able to watch me or I wouldn't be able to sign to you right now or talk to you at this time. But God, being a spiritual being, knew that though our bodies are temporal, our spiritual part of us, our spiritual anatomy of us, is an eternal thing. And so God says, I'm more concerned about the spiritual issues. And that's why he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for you and me 2,000 years ago and live again three days later so that you and I can have a spiritual birthday and know for sure that heaven is our home. Well, that leads to the next question. Why do we need a spiritual birthday? Well, it's simple. We're all sinners. 
We've all broken God's law and God's commands. But God loves us so much so that he let Jesus Christ become the substitute for your sin and my sin. So that if we recognize and admit that we are sinners, we can then trust in Jesus Christ as our substitute. And more so than that, our personal Savior and know that on top of our physical birthdays, we have a spiritual birthday now in that God becomes our father, we become his sons, daughters, we become his children, and we know we're going to go to heaven someday. My friend, it's very simple. It's not about what the church says, what I have ideas about, or what you have ideas about. It's finding out what God says directly to you and me. And he did it right there in the Bible, and in particular, John chapter 3, when Jesus says, you must be born again. If our church can help you with that question, if you have any questions about that, we can give you some answers. We'd be glad to help you in any way we can. Again, Pastor Randy, personally thanking you for watching the message. And again, if there's anything we can do for you, let us know. God bless and make it a great day.